thank you and I hope everyone can see my screen. And so at this moment, I'm going to go straight into the web. We still have our Mendeley open. This is our Mendeley, what we created for the class today, the SPA sandwich. We have already populated it with a number of items. Let me see how many items we even have here. Here we have got 12 documents, okay, 12 of 12. So we have 12 documents currently in our Mendeley library. And we'll be learning how once we have carefully, and I want to repeat and emphasize that way, carefully, all right? Once you have carefully taken the time to quality assure the library of references that we have, making sure that all the bibliographic details, the title, the author, the publisher, the journal name, volume, issue number, page numbers, all those details that we need to cite a particular article. If it's a book, then the book, but uh, particulars or metadata like the author, uh, publication year, if it's an edited work, the editors, the chapter, the pages of that chapter or section that you read, all those things. Once you have made sure that every single detail about your source or your resource is well catered for and there's no mistake, then you are sure that once you have started working in Microsoft Word, you simply just don't have any difficulty at all citing your work because you know it is correct. Now, one thing though that I should remind you of is the fact that during that quality assurance, one of the most important things to be looking out for is the resource type, okay? Over here, the resource type, especially when you are doing a manual entry. You should always know the kind of thing you want to cite. So if it is a video, there's a way to cite a video. If it is a student thesis, you have to indicate it. So I'm going to bring in a manual entry form again, just so we can understand the importance of this first part. Because don't forget that whatever citation style you are using, the type of resource is very key because how it is formatted depends on the type of resource. The way journal articles are formatted is different from how books are formatted. Formatting of books is different from formatting of book sections, magazine articles, um, legal cases, television programs, theses. So if you click the drop down arrow here, by default, Mendeley always picks journal article. That is the default value. So if you want to enter a particular material, you know it's not a journal article, always drop down this arrow and then scroll look for which exact type of resource it is. Is it a thesis? Is it a web page, a statute, a report, whatever, a newspaper article? What exactly is it that you want to reference? You will need to select that because when you select that, it will reformat the fields. For example, it is general article now. So you can see it gives you the title of the article. It asks for the authors. There's a field for the name of the journal, the year, volume, issue number, pages, and all of that. Now, Let's change this resource type and see the things we'll see. If we change this into a newspaper article, can you see now we have publication, we have author, we have title, year, then pages. If we change this again to, let's say, a web page, very good, because I'm sure many of you will be citing web pages. So if you pick a web page, look at it author, title, publication, year, then pages, you can forget about it. It doesn't really make any sense there. But what I want you to see is when you come down here, you can see date accessed, okay? Date accessed. When did you access this page? Because we understand, we know that some pages can be very dynamic. Information can change quickly over time. So the date of your access must appear. Then the URL, what is the address to that particular site? Now, all these are the reasons why you must always make sure that the first thing to quality assure is the resource type. Before you go ahead and fill out the form, first make sure that you know what type of resource you want to cite and you select it so that it will pre-format the input form for you to make sure you are entering the right particulars of the publication. All right, so that is just by way of warning on quality assurance because quality assurance is all there is to your Mendeley 
because I know most of you are aware of the computer term giggle. Eh? Giggle, garbage in, garbage out. These things are apps which are programmed on certain algorithms. They are not human beings. So it will be hard for them to know whether what you are putting in is wrong or right. So don't forget that even though Mendeley facilitates your referencing effort, it does not take away your own intelligence or your own knowledge of referencing, all right? Your own knowledge is very important because where the system messes up, you should be able to detect it. So it is not a replacement of, uh, of for your knowledge of referencing, no. It is just an addition to facilitate the work for you so that you spend less time, you become more efficient when you are dealing with referencing. Because don't forget, for all academic work, referencing is about one of the most important aspects of your essays. All right, so let's get started this way. Before we get into how we cite from our library, I promise that I was going to show you the web plugin as well, all right? So that when you are in an online environment and you really want to export a citation, it is very easy. You still go to tools and then you click on install web importer, the web importer. So once you click on that, it will load your default um, browser. Okay, your default browser. Now here, I want to give a candid advice, a candid advice, okay? For all students, I would suggest that you get a Chrome, okay, Google Chrome browser. Get a Google Chrome browser and make it your default browser, all right? Make Google Chrome your default browser. The reason for giving you this advice is that, you know, Google is a whole suite of several services that are student friendly. Okay, YouTube, Google Drive, Google Docs, which you can use for your survey development and all manner of things. So Google actually comes with a bundle of several student-friendly resources. So if you get a Google account and you have your Google Chrome browser as your default, use that one throughout your research. So adopt the Google browser for your research work. In that case, it will be very easy for you to move across the several tools, applications, and services available from Google. All right? Okay. In my case, I have made the Edge browser my default. So the moment I clicked on import, uh, install the web importer, it brought me to Microsoft Edge. All right. Now, if you did the same thing, irrespective of your default browser, you will come to this page and Mendeley gives you this red button or bar that says get web importer for whatever browser you have. Mine is Edge, so it is, it is saying for Edge. If yours is Chrome, it will say for Chrome. If yours is for Firefox, it will tell you for Firefox, all right? So all you do is click on this link, okay? The moment you click on it, it will now open to ask you to add it to your browser. All right, it opens to ask you to add it. Now, because I have already added mine, and I can show it right here, my plugin or the add-in for Mendeley has already been added, it is here, can you see it? That is why mine says remove. You can see the blue button here, remove, because I've already added. Now, if you are doing this for the first time, you will see in the blue button here, it will say add or simply add. All you have to do is click on it and you see that the web importer is added right here to your favorite bar. So now you can point to say Mendeley web Hello, sir. So once you have gone through this process of adding, as I said, I have already added, so mine says remove. In your case, it will say add, just click add and it will appear here, like mine is appearing, all right? You can see my Mendeley plugin in the browser. All right, so we are done with that. Now, what I'm going to simply do is, I'll try and maybe log into WHO site. We are still on COVID-19, right? So who.int, who.int, I'm moving to the World Health Organization site. And let's suppose I'm coming to read something on COVID-19 here. 
And so it says coronavirus situation dashboard, blah, 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 advice for the public, country guidance, vaccines and tests. Okay, uh, the push for COVID-19 vaccine. Maybe I should read something on that rather. So the push for a vaccine uh, is an interesting read for me. So let's suppose I'm reading this particular article, okay? And then I feel that I want to cite WHO for this particular article. All that I have to do is to click on my Mendeley Web Importer, okay? Once I click it, it will record whatever is on the screen at this moment. But you can see it is my first time that I am coming to use this thing here. So it's asking me to sign in. This is why it is important that when you are registering, use an active email, an email that you are actively using, which password you will not forget, okay? So I am going to sign in so that my web version of Mendeley is also active and is in sync with my desktop version. So this is my email that I'm using. And so my password, I'm also going to add right now. And I check stay signed in, stay signed in. But it gives you this tip. It says not recommended for shared device. So you can only check stay signed in when it is your personal computer, you know, it is not a public computer somebody else will come and use, all right? So I sign in. And if my network is good, Mendeley is going to accept exactly. So you can see, it has picked it automatically and it already sees that this particular website has this particular thing on the page currently, the push for COVID-19 vaccine. And this is the URL. Now, I need to tell the system where to store this. You can see that it has automatically picked one of my folders called Infolit from the Mendeley desktop app. I don't want that. I want another folder, which is the SPH folder we created today. So, I drop down the arrow and I'm coming to scroll to see if my SPH folder will show. If it shows, then I'm lucky. If it doesn't show, then it means that I have more work to do. SPH, well, it doesn't show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And now I can explain why. You see, after I did all that work in the desktop, I did not, okay? I did not sync up and I'll show you how that is done. Because I didn't sync up, the web version is not seeing the new folder. So what I'll do is that I'll put it in the general folder. Okay, so let me see if I can see all documents. Uh, okay, let me allow it to enter the info list, okay? I know it is going to info list, all right. When I get back to the desktop, I'll remove it from info list. So I'm going to add this. But before I add it, am I okay with this very reference? So if I don't know if it has picked all the details correctly, what I do is click on the reference itself, or you can see the small pencil icon here. It means edit, edit reference. Okay, so let me just close this one. Edit reference. And so as I click edit reference, it opens the form for me. And you see the first item it picked up is what? The reference type or the resource type. It is a web page and that is correct. And what is the title of this web page? It is the push for, or the title of the article is the push for a COVID-19 vaccine. Who are the authors? Excellent. So you can see that here, Mendeley was not able to determine the author. But again, watch very carefully that on the online form, Mendeley gives you only one option for listing the author's name. That is the last name of the author must come first, followed by a comma and the first name. So over here, if you take the license of just typing it naturally with the uh, first name first, Mendeley will not be able to recognize that uh, you are doing it the way we did it in the desktop app. So make sure over here in the web, you follow exactly the example given. The author's last name followed by a comma and then the first name. But in this case, it's an institutional author. So we are not going to respect this. So we are writing the whole of World Health Organization without any comma anywhere to separate the last name. So World Health Organization as an institutional author, that is the author. Then let's scroll down and see what else we can update before we accept this reference. Publication details, what is the publication? 
Okay, so this publication is under, you can see uh, we have home, there's emergencies, disease, coronavirus disease, COVID-19. So I think that is the publication title for this website, is coronavirus disease. Coronavirus disease into bracket COVID-19. All right, now which year? Of course, this is a 2020 issue. We don't have to worry our heads about that. And uh, for the month, let's see whether on the website itself, WHO indicates when this article was added. If there's no indication, we leave it at that. But we know from the footer, you can see from the footer that this is copyrighted 2020. Okay? So this is the year we picked 2020 is correct. Only that the particular article that we are dealing with right now, it has not been referenced to any particular date in terms of the month and day in which it was posted. All right. So we cannot indicate those ones. So we leave it at that. And then um, we now move down to see what else they are requiring from us. Automatically, Mendeley has picked up our date of access. It is 7th October 2020. So it has filled it out. Then the website, this is the URL, it has already picked it up. And that is the end. So I think that we are now good to go. We can add this resource. But don't forget, it's going into this particular folder, Infolink, okay? So I click on Add. And that is all. Reference has been added. You can see the green check mark. So I can close this form because I don't need it. I don't need it anymore. Now, that is what happens when you are trying to cite a web page. You can simply click on your web importer and then you try and edit the details to agree with the content of the web page and you are good to go. But that is not the end. Now, because most of the time you will be offline while you are writing your research assignments or whatever tasks that you are doing that needs referencing, always when you have gone online and have done all these works and exported citations to your Mendeley account, it is good to keep in mind that in an online environment, all the citation exports that you are doing are actually going into your Mendeley web version. They are not going into your Mendeley standalone or desktop version, all right? So in order for you to have all these contents that you have placed on the web available in your desktop version, when you go back, I'm going to close this right now. When you go back to the desktop version, this very one on your desktop, which can work whether you are connected online or not, okay? You see the icon before help, this icon here, it is called sync. So while you are online, you click on this to sync. Now you can see it is processing and it is syncing and the progress bar is here telling you it's 27, 31%, 52, it is going. So it is adding any document that we have added to our online library, which was not sync before. Once we click on the sync here, it is adding all of them. At the same time, all these new documents that we added, including the folder for SPA sandwich, which we created in the desktop version, and we didn't sync up. Right now, it is syncing all the, you can see now it is telling you what, 76% doing what? Uploading files, uploading. Can you see it? Uploading nine out of 11. Very good. So it is telling you that all the new items that we added here in the local desktop version are being uploaded to the web. All right, so it is syncing in both directions. It will sync if you did something offline up to the web, and it will also sync down here if you did something on the web that needs to be added to the desktop version here. Now, the reason for this is that sometimes maybe you are working on this particular computer, you leave it at home, you are far away, maybe across the region, then your supervisor calls that, oh, you should update a particular reference. You don't need to worry that, oh, I left my laptop, whatever. No, any available computer that you get. The moment you sign into Mendeley, all your documents that you actually stored on your desktop version is available on the web for you. You can get them from there to site. Or even if you change your PC, okay, these accounts that you have created are maintained perpetually. So even if you change your PC, the moment you log in to your account on Mendeley again, or install a new Mendeley app on your new PC, all these 
articles that you ever stored on Mendeley will be downloaded right back to your new device because they are available in the web version. So that is the importance of syncing. So always remember when you are online to press your sync button so that the desktop app will communicate with the web version of Mendeley and you will always stay up to date. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to try and move that article that was in the info lit, which you copied from WHO right now. So I've selected it <clears throat> and I have to look for it. World Health Organization. It is right here. Can you see it? The push for COVID-19 vaccine. That was what we just added. And I want to move this to our InfoLit library. So here's what I do. I can scroll down here to be seeing our InfoLit library. It is here, that's a folder. So I can simply drag and drop. So I hold this World Health Organization entry that we made from the web, and I just drag it up. Oh, sorry, where did I put it? I think I dropped it in the wrong place. Let me undo, Control Z. So I'm coming to grab it from here, and I hope you, you are following. So I move it, and I'm going all the way to SVHSW, somewhere, that's it, can you see it? So I drop it there, all right? Let's go up there and see whether it has dropped inside. If it doesn't drop there, then we'll come and cut it and go and paste there. So I go into the SPH and I can search inside the SPH now for World Health Organization. World Health Organization. Because that is the author. Sorry, World. Oh, sorry, sorry. World Health Organization. Oh, excellent. So you see, it has actually been dropped, the push for COVID-19 vaccine. It is right here in the sandwich. So I can now clear this search. And um, I think when I go down, I'll see it there. Or whatever it is. Um, how come I can't see it again? Okay, let me just make a search again. World Health Organization. Please, sir, it's before the Lancet COVID-19. Come again. It's there. It's there. It was above yeah. Lancet COVID-19. I was above Lancet. Then I didn't see. Sorry. Okay, so let me go back. You clear it. Where is it? Oh. Uh, Lancet, Lancet, where is it? Calm down. Down. Okay, down. Uh-huh, here. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. You spotted it right. Thank you so much. So it is right there. So... What I showed you is another way. It is possible that sometimes as you were adding your references, there was a mix up. But once you can identify where the reference was wrongly put, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping it into the right container or folder. All right. So that is just what we did by moving it from the infolit folder into the appropriate folder, the SPHSW. So this is it. But you can observe something as I showed you in the earlier session. You see that Mendeley feels that we have not actually documented this thing well. So once we selected it, it tells you in the details pane that these details need reviewing. Can you see it? So what I can do here is because I'm online, I right click on the title and then I say update details. And let's see whether Mendeley can do something. Oh, wow. It quickly did that. But I know the interesting thing, the only thing it saw and corrected is the fact that we use the full name World Health Organization, and he decided to change it to WHO. So what is the difference? <laughs> well, I don't know the difference. I don't know why Mendeley chose to change it into WHO, but we accept the WHO. So as I mentioned earlier, this is one way of updating. Okay, so right click on the title and say update details. Or if it were a general article and we had something like the digital object identifier, the DOI, or the PubMed ID, you could use the search icons here to update their details as well. All right, so on this note, I think we are through with how to build our library in the simplest way. I have shown you several ways of adding items to your library. I showed you how you can do the drag and drop, how you can enter the details of any particular source manually, how you can also use the DOI 
In fact, one thing that I didn't show you is this fact that um, you can actually use a DOI directly. So you can copy the DOI of a particular document or the PMID, and when you come into the new form as if you are entering a new one, all you do is just update the details and it will carry everything and put in here except the attached file or the, uh, the physical file itself. Now, I have seen three raised hands. I will allow them to ask their questions and then we'll now move into Microsoft Word and see how after building our library nicely and quality assuring the content, how we can use the content of this library now to support our arguments while you are writing in Microsoft Word. So please, those who have raised their hands, kindly, uh, there are now four people, please kindly now, uh, Hello, Victoria, sir. Victoria is first, yes. Hello, sir. Yes, Victoria. No, this is Ruth. Uh, this is Ruth rather, okay, Ruth, yes. Yes, please. Please, I want to find out after syncing, can you go back to do any correction? Oh, yes. You can always make any correction that you feel is necessary. Okay? But okay. after making that correction, remember to press your sync again so that okay. the updated version will be available both in the web and the desktop versions. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, who is the next person? All right, I think they are reserving their questions. So let's continue. So right now, we are set with our Mendeley library. And we know that everything is correct in terms of the details that we have added there. All we now have to do is start writing our literature review our assignment, our whatever it is that we are writing. And I'm going to just use some dummy uh, text here. Don't worry about it. I'll try maybe to write a few correct sentences, but the rest will just be a kind of dummy text I'll import from the Microsoft Xeon uh, generator. <coughs> and then just to show you how you can cite. We know that there are two main ways of citing. That is, you use a signal phrase where you use such um, words like according to so so and so, or you start with the author's last name and year, and then you proceed to make an argument. That is one way, the signal phrase. There's also the other way, <coughs> which is the parenthetical approach to citation, where you would have already made your argument or have said whatever you want to say. And then in brackets at the end of your statement, you indicate your support or your source of that idea. All right. So let's assume that uh, I'm going to start a sentence right now and we'll try and see if we can cite any of our sources from the Mendeley Library. So I'm going to start a sentence and uh, say that uh, the general perception of experts globally was that <clears throat> Africa would be worst hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this statement that I have made is a statement of fact because we have heard several experts, even from the WHO, from the National Institute of Health of America, and most you know, public health experts, especially outside Africa, who were predicting doom for the continent because they felt that we had compromised health systems and all manner of things. Excellent. So I know it's a statement of fact and that I can actually cite a source that buttresses the claim that I'm making, all right? So remember I told you that once we have installed our MS Word plugin, it will be available uh, under your references tab, okay? So you click on references and you can see the Mendeley site Omatic group, this particular group. What is an in-text citation you want to do? And here I've already made my claim 
and I'm going to use the parenthetical uh, style. So I simply go insert citation, and Mendeley brings me this input form, asking me to cite. Now, here, there are two ways you can go about it. If you already know the source in your mind, for example, here, I think I know a source uh, in the morning, or rather the first session of the afternoon, when we went into Hinari, we saw something about uh, a statement. I think that is the Lancet uh, document. So Lancet, COVID, something. Very good. Commission statement. Can you see it? So I assume that this is the statement that actually supports my claim. So I simply select it. It is picked up here. And here, realize, you realize that after that first one, it brings a semicolon, and then there's a shade for me to add another one. That means sometimes your argument that you are making or the claim or statement that you have made may be supported by <coughs> multiple sources. So all the sources that support that idea that you have expressed, you can list them together. In this case, it is only one source that supports my argument. So I leave it there and I say, okay, all right. It is Lancet COVID-19 commissioners and uh, task force chairs, whatever. Now, you see, another interesting thing you should observe is, as I have cited and I saw this long name, is it true that it is the author of this particular document? So if I have any suspicions, I simply have to go back to my Mendeley and look for that particular one, that Lancet, where is it? So when I click here, let me scroll to the left and see whether, okay, I have the PDF, okay? So I'll open the PDF to see if it is true that that is the author. So it says commission statement, the Lancet Task Force Secretariat. So we assume it's the right author, and so we leave it there like that. That is the first one. Now, watch this. The moment you have entered your first citation, you can actually invoke the reference list. Don't forget on this page, we put our references on the very last page, page number five. So you can now go there, click on the references, okay? And uh, use the second one that says insert bibliography. Don't forget we use the insert citation for the in-text citation. Now the end list of references will use insert bibliography. So you click on insert bibliography and what we have already cited in a split second is displayed here in full, all right? Now, once you have done this, you can check whether your citation style is correct. Currently it is on American Psychological Association 7th edition. If that is the one you are asked to use, then fine, you are at the right place. But if you were to use any other style, for example, we have American Medical Association style 11th edition, <clears throat> American Political Association, uh, Science Association, we have the IEEE, uh, Cite Them Right, Chicago Manual of Style, Modern Humanities, Modern Language, Nature. We actually have more styles. So depending on whatever style you were supposed to write in, whether you're writing for a general or your school, whatever, I believe your school also be adopting the APA, but whatever style you are asked to use, you can always change that style over here in your Microsoft Word document, okay? So right now, let's leave it at the APA 7th edition. And that is how it comes. Now, somebody asked this question in the morning. Yes, once you have done this first one, every other citation that you add will automatically have its full details added at the back there and automatically arranged in alphabetical order. So I am going to now insert dummy text so that we can cite more, okay? So for example, um, let me get an Elorem Ipsium text. So I have, um, Oh, sorry, it should be a new paragraph. Sorry about that. So, new paragraph. 
Good. So let's assume I have typed all these things. And uh, over here, I want to do a citation. Now, the other way of citing, as I mentioned, is let's assume you don't have the author's name in mind, but you know it is in your Mendeley library. So what you do is you just click on go to Mendeley. Okay, go to Mendeley. And when you click on that, it takes you into your Mendeley library. Then you look for the folder where you have stored it. Currently, we have stored ours in the SPH sandwich folder. And that is what we have open right now. So let's say what we wanted to cite are one full, limiting the spread. So we select it. The other one is, um, which one? The push, the WHO one. Now, <clears throat> if you want to select things that are not in a continuous or that don't follow each other, you go down your control key. So I hold down control key and I select this one also. So I've selected two items I want to cite. Now the next thing is, uh, let me admit this people. Okay. The next thing is to cite, right? And um, okay, why am I not seeing cite here? Why am I not seeing cite here? There's something wrong. The moment I select, okay, let me go back. Um, so I go to insert and then go to Mendeley library. Very good, it has now come. So you can see these new items that have come here. This is site. So once I've selected what I wanted to cite, I selected this and I think I also selected the WHO. Very good, two items. <clears throat> so I just simply click on site and it will bring it straight back into Word. So you can see that it has been cited here, Bonful Etal 2020 and WHO 2020, all right? Now, if I scroll down to my references, you will see that automatically they have been added. Without any effort, I don't need to go back and say, insert the bibliography again. And you can see that automatically it has rearranged to make sure that B comes before L and L before W. Can you see that? So at the same time, it is automatically shuffling and rearranging your reference list in alphabetical order. All right. We are about three minutes to hit the top of the hour. The last thing I want to show you is how you can manually edit this default parenthetical uh, in-text citation. Mendeley always gives you the parenthetical one by default. So if you want a signal phrase type, so according to the Ministry of Health, okay, so according, according to, okay, we don't have Ministry of Health. We have, there was another one, the one, the Fatima one that I did. Okay, so according to, I want to cite Fatima. I remember I entered one very manually that I said it was a book session. I hope you remember that. Okay, so yes, according to yeah. Fatima Raoul. Raoul, exactly. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. So then I will write my Fatima Raoul. You can see that it comes up COVID 19 pandemic in Ghana. I select it. And I say, now you notice that as I mentioned, Mendeley by default actually gives you the parenthetical one. You get it. So all you have to do is <coughs> move into this and first remove the opening bracket in front of the last name of the author, Raoul. Then take off this comma also because with the signal phrase, there will not be any comma after the author name. Then fix your opening bracket rather in front of the year 2019. Now, once you have manually edited this and you click outside to continue typing, <coughs> Mendeley will quickly prompt you. It says, 
Do you want to keep this citation edit? Because the citation Raul Etal 2019 has been manually edited. Do you want to keep this manual edit or revert to the automatically formatted version? Then I say, no, I want to keep it. Okay? I intentionally edited it myself. So I can put the comma here after a year now, and then I continue. So and so and so and so and so, and I see so many things. Now, again, if we should go down right now, you see that Raul has also been added in a full reference list. Very good. So you can see Raul F, Thompson T, and Mohammed K, 2019, COVID 19 pandemic in Ghana. In, can you see this? In FB Zoto and P Amuna S, Pandemics and Epidemics, A World of Souls. Can you see that? So as I mentioned to you, at the time you were picking the resource type in your Mendeley, make sure you are picking the right thing because the type of resource will determine how it is cited. You can see this was a book section or book chapter in an edited work. So if you look at the way it has been written, it is different from the article here by Bonfu. Can you see? Different from the web page by WHO and all of that. So it is very critical for you to know the type of resource that you are citing and indicate that before Mendeley will be able to cite it right for you when you are doing your actual work. So I want to thank you very much <clears throat> on this note that Mendeley is ended here and I hope you enjoyed how it works. Fascinating, but there are other things that I want to discuss with you before we actually close. So it is just one minute past the hour. If you give me the next 10 minutes. Sir. Yes, please. No, a question. I yes, actually please. went off uh, when you were doing the, uh, the library. Okay. I wanted to find out uh, if maybe you have a general and, yes. and you, you can't uh, locate or there, are, there is no year for it. When you cite, it gives you uh, ND. Yes. At the end, uh -huh. so if you don't, if you can't find the year, what do you do? So that's it. If you can't find the year, then it is ND, no date. That's it. So that's correct. There's nothing wrong. And with it, it makes it right. Come again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello, I said, then it makes that right. Yeah, it is right. The fact is that there's no year. Okay. You cannot so enter the year. Uh -huh. So once the article doesn't have okay, okay. the date, it is not your doing. Just leave it at the end. It is correct. Okay, thank you. Welcome. My Isaac. question is, when you download it, Mendeley, yes. it asks you to sign in. I think you said we can use our emails to do the login. Exactly. And if you should do so, when you enter, it asks you to enter an email again. That's why that's you said we should enter everything in the school name or we can still continue to use our email and if so can we change it anytime the school gives us the email thank you sir okay now for the main delay um i will not even encourage you to use the school email okay because you might want to keep your mendeley data for life and as for the school email once you leave the university it expires all right, so that is why I said, as for the Mendeley, use your active email. If it's a Gmail, Yahoo, whatever you know is the one you are using actively, you will not forget the password. Use that for your Mendeley account because you carry your Mendeley with you even beyond you has. All right, and regarding the issue of the sign up, please, if you have installed the app first before trying to sign up, then notice that. On the first phase, where you were asked for your email and password, you cannot click on sign in because you have not yet created your account. So instead of sign in, look on the bottom left. You see the sign up or register. Click that one. That is what will get you to be added to the Mendeley database first. That is if you are actually coming through the app. You have installed the app before trying to register. You go to sign up first, sign up or register first. And it is after they have created your online dashboard and welcome you that you know that you are now in the Mendeley community that you will now go back to the app 
and you sign in. So that's the difference. Sign up means you are fresh to the platform. So you are now creating your profile to be recognized. But once they have recognized and welcomed you, then you can now go ahead and sign in. To sign in means you already belong there. So you are only entering your account. So that's the difference. So those of you who have installed the Mendeley app first, before attempting to register, make sure that the first option that you choose is sign up, not sign in. Then after your account has been created and you come back to log in, then you can use the sign in so that it will open the Mendeley desktop app for you to use. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. You're welcome. Yes, Monica. Hello, sir. Monica. Please, I want to know how you move from the library to the uh, web. Hello, to sir. Please, let, let's finish with Monica, please. Sir, yes, please. Monica. I yes. said I want to know how sir. you move from the yes. MedLab library to the web part. To the Microsoft Word. Yes, please, to the Microsoft Word. Okay, when you say move, what, what do you mean by move? Do you mean when I was citing? Um, how, mm -hmm. how, yes, how we, we, we are bringing the citations from the references from the Mendeley to the Word document. Ah, oh, okay, okay, so let's do another example. It is very simple. That one, we have already installed the Microsoft Word plugin, okay? So in our Microsoft Word, under the References tab, I hope you can see my screen. Under the References tab here, you already have the group called Mendeley Automatic because we installed the plugin. So it is right from here in Microsoft Word. You just click on Insert Citation. Then it brings up this small form for you to enter the name of an author or a title or anything at all that you remember, okay? But if, as I said, if you cannot remember anything from the library yourself, then simply click go to Mendeley. You see this one? If you click this command, go to Mendeley, it will now open your Mendeley library for you. Then you can now look for that particular title or document or author that you want to cite. So for example, um, assessing the potential impact of atomicity or whatever, whatever. So, okay, I choose this one assessing potential, then I click this one, and I simply go to site. You can see site over here after the sync. So once you select site, it will now bring it right here into uh, Microsoft Word for you. So that is how we maneuver between the Mendeley app and Microsoft Word. But even if you, if you can remember the author's name, for example, I think I have some documents uh, online. So for example, I just type Haibo right now, okay? Literature section around very good. So I have something like this. I just cite it. <clears throat> can you see it? So if okay. I have the name in mind, I can enter it directly. Or even the title, I can enter it. But if I don't have it in mind, that is when after clicking in set citation, I'll not click go to library and I go and look for it. And when I get it, I just click cite. And then it takes it back to where my cursor was in the Microsoft Word document. And right now, all these things that I've added, as I mentioned, once you did it for the first time, every time you add a new in-text citation, it automatically updates the reference list. And you just keep going and growing and growing like that until you have finished writing your entire uh, research report. All right. Okay, thank you very thank much. You, Let me Okay, thank you. So let me now add those last two items I wanted to share with you, and then we can take more questions and close. The first thing I want to share with you is how you can register as a library user. Yeah, please, can I, can I just, Hussein, please, let me just finish the last two items, and then I'll take questions, okay? Shall we? Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you so much. So let me just finish these two items and I'll take all the questions. All right. Now, <clears throat> how you register? I have a manual here I'll be sharing with your uh, course reps, okay? So I'll simply take you through the manual uh, for you to see. Um, you have e-resource user manual. All 
All right. I will share this with your course reps. So they will share with you and you can go through the process. If you have forgotten anything that we did today about moving across the UHAS library resources, this will simply guide you through it. It's not a long manual, just six pages. All right. Now, where I want to focus right now is on page six forward. Uh, or rather, that's the yeah, that's page six, I guess. Page six. If I am right. Yeah, page six out of nine. Yeah. So on this page six, you see that I have given you a step-by-step -step description of how you can create, as I named the guidelines for setting up your individual account. You can create your individual user account in the library, <clears throat> okay, by following this link. Just when you click on this URL, it will open this very site for you, the University of Ghana Patreon uh, site. Then you just follow the instructions I have put here to actually create your personal account. It is the creation of this personal account that will actually enable you to have access to those databases like Science Direct and the rest that I showed you from the University of Ghana off campus. Okay, all those steps are actually described here. So it is not any difficult thing when you have successfully created your dashboard to also be able to log in to the e-resources of University of Ghana via off-campus authentication. So that is the first thing I want to show you. But before you do this, you um, let me finish uh, coordinating the issue about your university email addresses, okay? And once I get them, I'll cross-check because I need to first add you to our library user database. If I add you to that Patreon database, that is when you will be able to create the personal account. So I'll be in touch with your course reps. The moment I successfully add all of you to the database, I will also alert him so that you can go straight to page six of this uh, nine-page guide. And okay. Hello, sir. Yes, yeah. Please, uh, concerning the forum, is it um, only to your course as in information or it's apply, it applied to all the other courses. Okay, in fact, the forum I have set up, actually, you can see it says section C. Okay, forum in section C. It is actually for just my section that I am teaching. Okay. okay, all your other lecturers, if they really want to have a chat with you, are supposed to set up their forum for those discussions. So if they haven't, your course reps can still engage them and see which alternative means they want to take your views or your answer and question session. Maybe they want to use a Zoom, especially uh, dedicated to that. I don't know. But I hope I've answered you. Yes, Hello, sir. yes, sir. OK, thank you. Hello, Marina. Hello, sir. Uh, please come again on the literature issue. Uh, for instance, where we cited the document. Yes. When you are reading some research works, yes. you realize that they put one comma two. Oh, yeah. I, I, get, I got that one. I'm talking about the one you said uh, it's not activated. I wanted to get that one. Yes. Uh, the... the that says she see you said after reading we should just test our mind if we can recollect what we have read by putting it in our own way yes so the student aspect has not been activated no that that is it it was supposed to have been on the forum okay you have to share your ideas on the forum you understand yeah. and that is where uh, your colleagues were complaining that when they tried it, they were told they didn't have access. So that one, I said I was going to look at the settings to make sure that everyone can post to the forum. Okay. Uh -huh. But the other one where uh, the practical activities, okay? The practical activities, you were not supposed to write in the forum. That one, you were supposed to just think about the thing. Then underneath it, you see that there's an answer clue. That's one. <laughs> 
how you can click to show it, and then you compare your own ideas and see whether you were right. But the reflective activities that involve writing, they will go on the forum. So I'll check the issue with the forum and get back. And please let me answer the other question by Mawinam before the person comes in. Yeah, Mawinam, this is what you are talking about. Let me show it to you. So you see, <clears throat> right now we were using American Psychological Association, right? APA. And the APA style is that it uses the author's last name and the year in brackets. So let's suppose that we wanted the kind of citation that is numerical. If you go back here, you just simply change it. You see IEEE, -E -E, for example, this very one, IEEE, -E -E, the Institute of Electrical, Electronic, and whatever engineering. If you choose their style, you see that Mendeley has automatically reformatted and all those ones that were in the parenthetical citation, can you see they have turned into numbers? Yes. Very good. So it is the citation style. It is not anything. That is why I said that if you're writing for a journal, you have to know the style that the journal is using. I think Vancouver, Vancouver also uses numbers. Now, the only disadvantage here with Mendeley is that when you are changing from one style to the other, all the manually edited references will not change. So you see that here, according to Raoul et al, still remains like that. Because if you observe critically, those texts that use the numbering, okay, they never start the numbering in front of the text. It always comes at the end of the text. So the number system will work only with the parenthetical type of citation. Uh -huh. If that is what you are using, then when you scroll down to your reference list, you also see that the end list of references is also formatted differently. So it is numbered. Can you see? I'll add it to the... So the, it is all about the style that you are using. So we can safely take back to our American Psychological Association. Hello, sir. Yes, Teresa. Uh -huh. Sir, please, I want to know whether the forum is for only questions. No, 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 no. It's not for only questions. In fact, please remember that okay. all the interactions we've had today were only on Unit 6, where the practical use of the information was involved. But Unit 5 is all online. Okay, you have to read the full content of the text. And within that text, I have embedded a lot of activities that include your sharing of thoughts on the forum. So the forum is not just for questions. Any area where I ask you to reflect and write your ideas on the forum, you can actually get to the forum and put your ideas there. So it is not only just for questions. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. You are most welcome. Any more questions? No, sir. No, no sir. sir. Okay. Yeah. Because I no, know you're not tired, you want to go. No, no, sir. You have done well. <laughs> oh. right. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I'm so grateful for all your time. Please, I already shared my email and my WhatsApp contact. Those who could not get through because of bad network, especially my brother Husseini, Husseini, please, I want to hear your question and answer you. So you can still give me a private chat by WhatsApp or send me an email and I will actually respond to your question.